Good night and welcome to <laughs> a very abbreviated and yet necessary Thanksgiving service. I am a man that God made to be with people. Tonight I'm not with people the way we have been for so long as I said Sunday morning. We were together for 24 weeks. God blessed this church and able to worship in person, and nobody got COVID. Well, this past week, we have had several. So we just had to shut it down and welcome tonight. I realize that Thanksgiving service is not exactly a spiritual service, but we certainly can do spiritual things with Thanksgiving. So tonight, I'm simply going to share the word and share my heart. When I was here for 15 years at first and then the last two years, what I did is at the end I would bring the microphone around and we'd have the chance to take the microphone, actually share one with germs on it, and say what we really, really wanted and what we wanted to give thanks for. We're going to have an abbreviated thing at the end. So would you gather your children, your husband, your wife, your family, would you sit on the couch? I promise this is going to be about a 25-minute meditation from the Word and my heart. Pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my only strength and our only strength. Redeemer, Lord, that means to me that when I say something again tonight that is not true, is not glorifying to you, that people would forget it immediately. But when I say some things that are absolutely your word, in fact, we're going to read your word, a lot of it tonight. May we hear it. May we feel it. May we understand it. May we see it not as an opinion, but as God's holy word, as the God who created us know what's, what's best for us, and now asks us, okay, I can use this word because it's a good one, commands us, and what you command us is always right, that you command us what to do. Bless this meditation. Bless our homes. We're here to give thanks to you, for you, and to and for those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. My meditation. This is not how Thanksgiving is supposed to be. This horrible disease has been unleashed on the world. <laughs> it has been unleashed also on the church, the Christian church. And it's robbing us. And I'm grieving. It's robbing us of our personal love, our personal touch, our personal talks. It's robbing us of our personal hugs, our personal singing. We're going to read so many passages we're talking about singing, and we can't sing together. It robs us now of our personal worship. So I'm stating for the record right now, guys, record it, I hate COVID. <laughs> but, but COVID is not, you listen to me, it's not going to defeat us. I am sitting, standing sometimes, in front of you tonight to call us to give thanks in spite of something that has potential of taking our thanksgiving away. Listen to the next words. If we let it, we're not going to let it. Tonight, in the face of a disease that is being used, I believe this, by Satan himself to discourage individual Christians, to discourage Christian churches, we will look in Satan's face. Boy, I wish I could look him in the eye and say with Jesus in the wilderness when he was tempted by Satan, Satan, it is written. <laughs> I love those words. Jesus doesn't argue with Satan. He simply says, it's written, and he quotes scripture. Jesus quoted scripture and Satan left him. So tonight I Googled. I Googled and it has 133 times in God's word that we are commanded to give thanks or to have thanksgiving and give thanksgiving. 
I've selected 24 passages, yes, I'm serious, 24 passages that are going to have 100 times more authority than this old pastor. So I'm not here to listen to my lecture and me telling you how to give thanks. I'm looking Satan in the eye and say, Satan, it is written, this is what God says. Would you just sit back and open your ears, I hope it doesn't become noise, and just let Scripture lead us. 24 passages. Here we go. King Jehoshaphat prays this prayer in 2 Chronicles 20.21. When Jehoshaphat had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord, and he said to them, Say, give thanks to the Lord, for his steadfast love endures forever. Here, make a song about that. <laughs> Prophet Nehemiah, Nehemiah 12, 46, he says this, For long ago in the days of David, there were directors of singing, and there were songs of praise and thanksgiving written for God. Whoa, what a lead. I'm going to go to Psalms. I'm going to share seven of them. Did you know that Psalms really was written as songs? They were written by David or David's director of music. That's what Nehemiah was saying. So seven Psalms. Listen, I'm not going to put them to music. Believe me, you wouldn't want to. Psalm 7, 17. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to him. That is, do his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the Lord most high. Psalm 9, verse 1, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount, I will recall, I will remember all God's wonderful deeds. Do that. Psalm 30, verse 4, sing praise to the Lord, all his saints. Give thanks to his holy name. Psalm 57, 9, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the people. That's, I'm going to... Give thanks to the Lord right when I'm around people. I will sing praises to you among the nations. I think my mother did that. She'd sing wherever she is. She didn't even know what she was singing. She's singing in the grocery store. Psalm 79, 13. But we, the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. Psalm 104, probably the best known one. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. And Psalm 138, verse 2, I will bow down in your temple, in your church, and I will give you thanks, O Lord. I will give thanks to your name and your steadfast love, for you, Lord, are faithful. The prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 12, verse 4, Give thanks to the Lord and call in his name. Make known his deeds among the people. He says it again, just like in Psalm. Tell the people what God's doing for you. Daniel, remember Daniel 2, verse 23. To you, O Lord, I give thanks, and I praise you, and I praise you for you have given me wisdom and might. Well, Jesus said it himself. Matthew 26, 27. What, he's, he's serving communion, and then you have these words. He took a cup, and when he had, you got it, given thanks, he gave it to his disciples. When Jesus feeds the 4,000, not the 5,000, but the 4,000 in, in Mark chapter 8, verse 6, Jesus took the seven loaves, and heaven giving thanks, he broke them. I'm going to give Paul a whole bunch of them. He's going to get nine, but from all different books. Romans 6, 17, but thanks be to God that you who were once slaves to sin have become obedient. Oh, give thanks, God's making you come under his kingdom. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 4, I love this one. I give thanks to my God always for you. That's an introduction. He's going to do now another one. Hey, Corinthian church, I want to tell you that every single day I begin my prayer, I give thanks for you. My church, I love you. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's talking about that's a resurrection passage. 1 Corinthians 15, the whole thing is on resurrection. He's given us the victory. Thank God you have resurrection if you believe in him. 2 Corinthians 9.15, thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. That's the gift of Jesus Christ. Beyond words. 
Ephesians 1, verse 16. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Now, the Ephesian church, every day, guys, ladies, church, I, I, I give thanks to God for you. Ephesians 5, 20, the end of the book, giving thanks always for everything that God does. Oh, <laughs> Colossians 3.17, whatever you do in word or deed, whatever you do, do everything in the name of your Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God through Christ. Whatever you do. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, give thanks. Oh, I hate this one, but I'm going to read it because I chose it. Give thanks to God in all circumstances. I don't want to. <laughs> but that's what he commands. Michael! Give thanks, not for all circumstances, but no matter what. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. Three more. 1 Timothy 2, verse 1. Paul writes, Timothy, Timothy, young man, I urge that supplications and prayers and intercessions and thanksgiving be made for all people. That's what our prayer should be made of, supplication, prayers, intercessions and thanksgiving. Now two from John, the book of Revelation. John writes, Revelation 7, 12, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and glory and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. And finally, Revelations eleven seventeen. We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and was and who reigns forever. You can play that back because it's just me reading scripture, but listen to any one of those and it will absolutely change your life. And Satan came up to Jesus, tempting him three times. Three times Jesus looked at Satan in the eye like we just did and said, Satan, it is written, no matter what you do to us, we are to give praise and honor and glory and thanksgiving. Now you know that. Good, we're done, right? No, 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 no. We're not talking about thanks knowing. We're talking about thanksgiving. For my 44 years of ministry, I've done what I'm going to do right now, and here we go again. And the boys are back, they're going, oh, no, I've heard this when I was a little boy. But <laughs> here we go, and I mean this from my heart. I'm going to do some thanks giving. Bear with me for another, okay, seven minutes. As I try to say thanks to our Lord and to you, his people, that's what he commanded. Give thanks to the Lord, and I give thanks for you every day, says Paul, their pastor. Pastor Jim can't be here. He's got that stupid disease. So on behalf of him and I, I give you this. I thank God for this country. It's going to be all seas for a while. Because it's a place where I, where we can still do this. We can gather for worship when we, uh, we'll get there again. Okay, when there's, no cab, uh, when there's no COVID, we can gather. We are flawed, but... This country is horribly flawed, but one thing I love about it is that we still gather for worship. We can still openly disagree and dialogue and discuss. I know this is a touchy one, but I'm going to say it. We can still vote for our leaders. I know there are those who bash this country, but where else would you rather live? Where else would you Tell me what country you'd rather be. I am not going to move. Thank you, Lord, for our country where we can worship openly. We love you. Number two, I thank God for this little crazy community. Again, with all its faults, its flaws, and its failures, this wonderful community is open to Christianity. This community supports its churches and its Christian children. It supports even public schools because I've had kids in public school. Brad was in choir. I went to listen to Jack, my grandson, sing a couple years ago, and they sang religious songs in a public school, and I'm sitting there clapping. <laughs> 
this community sports, it's public schools, it's Christian schools, it's private schools, it's, it's charter schools, and it's home schools. And we don't fight. This community still supports Christian values, Christian morals, Christian ethics, Christian lifestyles. I love it here. That's why I live here and came back here. I thank God for this crazy little 105-year-old church. <laughs> Planted in the center of a county once upon a time in what they used to call no man's land. Now it's a growing hub. I love this church's facilities. Ooh, look at them. And I love how the community and our leaders allow our community to use it and use it hard. I love her variety of ages with us gray beards and the babies. I love her variety of ethnicity with its gray hair, its black hair, its blonde hair, its curly black hair, its curly blonde hair. I love to look out and see the variety of ethnicity. I love her devotion to the Word of God. I love how she really does want to grow, wants to reach, wants to teach, wants to help, wants to give, and wants to bring the love of Jesus Christ to others. Oh, we still have to go, but we're getting there. I love this church's love of missions and missionaries and the love of neighborhoods and neighbors. I love her commitment to Jesus Christ. I thank God for her activities, for her small groups, for her devotion to prayer and to worship, for her devotion to blended music and to volunteerism and to children. <laughs> what would it be without a children's message or the kids running around? I love how she, how you reach out to those in need. I praise God how she cares about marriages yet. When marriage is on the rocks, we try to put them together. We try to re remold them, reshape them, and blend them and help them. I, I love how she cares about the newborns. We pass the babies around. And I love how she cares about the unborn. Say amen. I thank God that I have the privilege of serving a church who cares for the hungry and the homeless and the hurting and the lost. She cares for its members and its non-members and its not yet members and members who were here once and we're trying to get them back if they haven't found a church home. She cares for the unreached. She cares for the sick. She cares for the old and the weak, the injured and the frail. I love it. You bring in meals. You become mentors. You give clothes and money. You give time and effort. You give help and hope. And you give love. I thank God for this church. I thank God for your commitment to worship. I'll say this, but there's very few other churches that win 24 weeks. And we gave it our best shot. I thank God for you, your commitment to prayer to the nursery, to the praise teams, to being singers and being instrumentalists, to Sunday school, your commitment to Wednesday night, to the gems and the cadets, to the VBS program, to the youth group and to YAP. I thank you for your commitment to small groups and to ushering and to greeting and to valet parking. I thank guys like this who at no charge are doing the audio visuals and trying to make this old goofy guy look halfway decent. I love those who do the landscaping and the cleaning. Those who do the decorating and the maintenance, the repairing of the parsonage, the, remo the remodeling of this place, the upgrading of the church. I love the tool time projects. I love the people who are kids hope mentors. I love the car care Saturdays and long for them to come back. I love those who take care of our senior citizens and, and, and those who do our children's sermons. 
I love the hand-to-hand. -hand. Kim and the others, thank you. I love, I love loving the name of Christ and how we support them. I love the sports teams. I love the ORC players. I love the ORC outdoor activities. Oh, you can go on. I love the archery league. Of course I do. I love the people that just can't help being a teacher. Um, Jim said it two weeks ago when he said, you know what, I found out that this church, many of the teachers don't even have kids in the class. Well, no, why? When they asked a lady, they said, well, I made a baptismal vow, and I have to raise these kids until they're in. Then they're my kids. I love those who are crazy enough, sorry, to say yes to being elders and deacons. <laughs> and the executive team, do you know the time and decisions it takes? I love those who are being devoted staff members. They're not just your workers. They're devoted Christian staff members. I love the devoted volunteers, the ones that serve coffee and juice, and every once in a while sneak in a cookie or two. <laughs> I, like, I like how people reach in their pocket. You know who you are. And are handing out candy to the little kids in the narthex just because they want to. I love, and I got a big blank with a question mark, but because I said, because I'm sure I missed a half a dozen that didn't say thank you to me. I apologize. I'm just a dumb old pastor that doing our best. We love you. I love it. I thank God. And I thank you. I got to keep going a little bit. Okay, maybe it's going to be nine minutes. I thank God that we are at full staff. I thank God for Christy, for Mary, for Michelle, for Heather, for Pastor Jim, for Dan, for Lori, for Danielle, and even for Adam and his mowing crew. <laughs> and again, I, I thank God for the unpaid heroes who are here two, three times a week. Once again, I'm looking at a couple back here who come in and wiring and lighting when they help Dan, and they just do things. They can't help it. People, we put some projects on hold, but isn't it nice that we have finished the playground and it's used constantly? Even today with all this COVID, there they were. The pews are done and done over. The piano has been bought and used well. The parsonage is done and lived in. We are common, ordinary folks who love God and who are called by God to help, to serve, in spite of all our flaws. I mean this. I thank God for the privilege of serving in a church again. <laughs> the second time. You know what? It's better than the first time, and I don't know why. I thank God for spouses and even children who say to the volunteers, yep, yep, honey, I'm going to church again. Honey, I'm going to church again. That's all right. You go. I'll, I'll take care of the kids. You just go. And rather than saying, you really have to be at church again. No, 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 no. Okay, maybe they say that once in a while. But 90% of the time, go. Uh, thank you for thank you for being an integral part of our church. I love the spouses. And I, I got to say this one. I thank God for my spouse who let me come back and out of retirement. <laughs> For Noreen, who encourages me and others, who has chosen because she loves it to get involved again, who again let me come back, and I love and thank Noreen for being by my side, listen to this, as I am this old, by my side 48 years as of yesterday. Wow. And finally, I thank God. I saved the best to last. I thank God. Most of all, for his son, Jesus Christ. I thank Christ for sending, for God for sending Christ. We thank, we thank him for Christ's birth. We thank him for his life. We thank him for his teaching. We thank you for his actions. We thank you for his example. We thank him for his death. We thank him for his resurrection. We thank him for his grace. We thank him for his promise of return. We thank him for the promise of eternal life to every single person who says, Lord, I want to be your child. 
I thank Jesus Christ, who was and is and always will be the center of this preaching, the center of our teaching, and the center of our reaching. Oh, do I ever wish I could pass the microphone around right now and listen to the wonderful things you usually say about each other. Not this year. Next year we're going to have a two-hour service. This year it's not God's will. But you can do this where you are. Here we go. If you're alone, would you just get a pencil and a piece of paper right now and you would you write down the names of ten people? Come on. Grab a pencil, probably right there. Write down the names of 10 people that in the next two days, because I think you're off of work, you're going to write them a snail mail note, or you're going to send them an email or a text, and you're going to tell them how they touched your life. You're going to write them a note and say thanks to them because of what they mean to you. Do it, please. I, I'm begging you. The church in this time of craziness needs it. If you are watching this with your spouse, okay, nobody's looking. Take her hand. Take his hand. Go ahead. It won't bite. Most of us don't. Look at them. You can do this. Come on. Look in their eyes. Honey, Noreen, thank you. Thank you for the things you do for me. Thank you for the way you love me. Thank you for the way you stand by my side. Thank you for the little and big things you do for me every single day. I know I'm not the best husband. I know I'm not the best wife. But right now, I apologize. And I want to thank you for what you mean to me. And if you're with your family, see those little kids running around and don't care if I'm on TV? <laughs> Would you gather them and stick them on your lap right now? Look in their eyes, give them a big hug, and say, kids, thank you for your help, for your love. Sometimes even for your scream, that shows me you're healthy. And kids, look at this old man. Look at, look at, look at, look at me. Kids, would you look at mom and dad, take their face like this, and would you tell them thank you? Hold their hand, look at them. Mom and dad, thank you for my home. Thank you for my clothes. Thank you for taking me places. Thank you for my food. And thank you for the love that you teach me. And thank you for praying with me. And thank you for telling me about Jesus. And now to all of us, alone or with others, would you just join hands together and we're going to pray. You got them? Come on, join hands. Hug them if you can. Let's pray together. Lord. We thank you for your love, for your care for us, and for the gifts that you give to us. Lord, thank you. God Almighty, for your creation, for your healings, for your help in the hard times, and for sending us Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you for the great times. <laughs> Once again, for your your son. We thank you for our Christian friends. We thank you for our Christian family. We thank you for our Christian church. We thank you for our freedom to worship. We thank you for Jesus Christ giving his life for me, for us, so that we can have eternal life. And Lord, with all those 24 passages, they all had something in common. We praise and thank you for all you are and for all you do because you deserve all of our thanks and praise. Finally, Lord, thank you for loving us in spite of all our sin. Forgive us all our sin. Thank you. And lastly, thank you for giving us life at conception and giving us life eternal. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God the Father, and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever.